uh, Aspie Hour podcast with me, Natalie Sherlock, or also known as Awesome Aspie. And obviously today we have a very special guest, my mother. Hello. Chantel Sherlock. Would you like to say anything? Hello, everyone. Right, okay, good. Right, at the moment we haven't got any viewers, but people will join as and when. Yeah. I didn't give people much notice this time because obviously it was supposed to be uh, happening on Tuesday, mm. but things went a little bit awry. So we ended up uh, postponing it until today. But I've got fixed all my technical hitchings and, uh, and now we are ready to do the podcast. So, um, is there anything you'd like to say before? I just like to say thank you for having me on your wonderful show. Yes, <laughs> you make it look so easy. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. Um, so, <clears throat> um, I thought we'd talk about um, me and my. Um, Aspenis and my Asperger's uh, first, a little bit about my backstory. Hold on, if I just move, shuffle that oh, way, yes. you shuffle that Thank way because you. You know, uh, people can't see you. Um, so I'm going to do half an hour on that and half an hour on what you want to talk about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, fair's fair. Okay. So, um, at what point did you become aware that I wasn't as other children? I'd say maybe about eight or nine. Eight or nine. Um, what brought that to the fore? Well, you had lots of imaginary friends. Uh, I thought that was uh, nice, but a bit different. Um, and also, your best friend was a tree at school. Oh, yes. Well, when I, I, that was when I was five. Yeah, I thought right. there was something not quite right there. <laughs> and uh, also that you were being bullied not, by, not only by your peers, but your teacher, teacher yeah. as well, which was rather unfair. Yeah. Um, so... In terms of like traits, so you you noticed that I, uh, m my friends were mostly imaginary and and or trees, mm -hmm. um, but uh, was there anything else that I would do that did you know obviously didn't? Well, you were seem... really quite intelligent right, right from a very young age. I think your first word instead of mum and dad was cherry. I thought that was just well. At least I'm a diplomat. I've always been a diplomat. I didn't want didn't want to say either mum or dad, you know, because that would you know show favoritism. Exactly. Um, so I said a neutral word, okay, cherry, because um, I didn't want to. Obviously, I mean, I didn't have any cognitive awareness at the time, but uh, you know, look, I probably. <laughs> I'd like to think it was because I and was a diplomat. Even how, I can't remember how old you were when you um, when I said that the computer had a virus. Oh, I was about seven then. She was about seven, and um, I said, "Oh, you can't use a computer, Natalie, because it's got a virus." So she probably got her blanket and put it round <laughs> the shoulders of the terminal. And, terminal? Oh, you mean the monitor? Uh, the monitor. Yeah. Um, and what else you do for the keyboard? I no, I. I, I put a box of tissues next yeah, to it. A box of tissues next to it. And uh, I I asked Mum to boil the kettle to make it a bowl of hot thick. Yeah. Because that was to... the procedure for when anyone ha was ill, you know, so, like, bowl keep it warm, you know, <laughs> bowl of Vic and tissues. So, you know, I was, you know, even at that early age, despite the fact that it's a misunderstanding, you know, because obviously... Computers don't get that kind of virus, you know, <laughs> and they cannot be treated in that way, mm. as as humans are. Um, I, um, uh, <laughs> it's a, a story I usually tell. I tell a lot in my speeches, um, 
and what have you, uh, when I'm talking about um, people uh, having misunderstandings, people with autism misunderstanding things. Um, so obviously when I was born, I had a very acute hearing. Uh, didn't I? You did, didn't when I? she was uh, taken down to a hearing test at a hospital. She nearly jumped out of the little cot when she heard the noise. Yeah. Uh, and that wasn't really picked up. There was no indication at the hospital that, oh, she's got oversensitive hearing. There might be a problem. Well, this was the 1990s. I, I mean, know. Yeah. you know, girls um, were only diagnosed with Asperger's at, in 1994, and I was born in 1996. So, considering it was only two years uh, previous, uh, two years after they'd started diagnosing girls with mm. autism, mm. I, I am guessing that they just weren't competent enough to pick that up or make mm. that connection. Um, and then when you started school, um, they thought you were a bit slow, didn't you? Yeah, so they, I know. Oh. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Like, that I was assessed, assessed in primary school. Yeah. And uh, they they said, oh, she's just a bit slow, which I, you know, <laughs> looking back at now, very offensive, you know. Um, but I believe in secondary school, the first day of second, secondary school, they ran you up and said, oh, we put her on the SEN list. Yeah, but, but they didn't say... But they're not, they didn't bother to explore it. No. Um, so that was... Yeah. <laughs> because Natalie had intelligence and she could get on with her work, they weren't worried because they were only interested in scores yeah. at the time. Well, like, yeah, but, you know, I started having uh, an inclination that I was on the spectrum for about when I entered my teens, I think. Uh, and there was... Um, but I remember the turning point, the turning point for me that said to me, there's something wrong with you, uh, you know, was um, this particular incident <laughs> with, with a door, involving a door. Uh, so <laughs> I was 18 at this point, 18 years old, and um, we were moving to Swanage and we had a, a side door that separated that you know sort of made sure that no one could get into the back garden or out of the back garden. Granddad put it up um, to keep me safe and stop me running away um, and um, the, it was a wooden door and it had rotted it was all rotten and you know in a dilapidated state of affairs so mm -hmm. i thought i would put a new door in i would make it my quest to put in a new door uh so i took the door off and then um you know put well i tried to i was trying to put a new one but um it, it didn't it, things went uh, awry and i was uh hysterical over this door I was sobbing my heart out in the corner of the kitchen um, over a door, an 18 year old young lady. And I thought, hello, <laughs> there is something not quite right about this. Um, so, but it wasn't until after we moved to Swanage that uh, I actually did anything about it. So after we moved to Swanage, mum's mm. um, friends took because we didn't have any any gear, we didn't have any um, things at all, um, yeah. and uh, our friend, mum's friend, uh, took us to uh, the took us shopping to get you know a bed, uh, get a cooker, a fridge, all of these various things that we needed. So, there we were in the car, and I was 
Uh, we've been in the car for, I don't know, however long, about 20 minutes, half an hour, I don't know how long. Anyway, we got when we got out of the car, mum uh, and uh, her friends were must, somehow on their own at some point because she said, oh, is your daughter autistic? <laughs> And mum said, oh, well, I don't know. She's never been tested. Um, but that was the kind of pathway to my diagnosis, really. Um, because I went to see my GP uh, and um, said, oh, I think, uh, you know, this is the case. I think I am autistic. And um, so I... Uh, did a test. I went to see this lovely Dr. Um, Ruth Ancliffe, and um, I remembered. Yeah, she um, she came all the way from somewhere else, another hospital, to see me. Uh, so I was quite, you know, um, uh, touched the, by the fact that she'd come all that way. So, um, yeah, I, I actually uh, went, did a quiz with it, well, like I went through all the questions and what have you. And, um, and then she said, oh, um, well, we'll uh, send it off to it. They reviewed it, a team of experts reviewed it. And uh, that is how then they sent me a, a letter, uh, you know, confirming that this diagnosis of Asperger's and um, they also sent me a care plan which was had a very lot of useful links now unfortunately one of the useful links was a parent and carer training course that mum could go on but unfortunately she because it was in Wimborne um <laughs> she thought that was too far away um so she never went to the course which you know kind of hurts me a bit because since then she has driven all over the place yeah but and sat navs do exist yeah <laughs> i didn't realize how how close it was to be honest from swanage to wimble it's an hour it's an hour i do now yeah well hindsight 2020 <laughs> um but uh, yeah, so I also am um, like uh, in Sherlock Consultancy, within Sherlock Consultancy, we do do parent carer training courses and we run them every, well, we will be running them every two months. Um, so, you know, every two, two months we'll have people uh, signing up. Obviously, they have to pay some money to to access the course because you know we have to cover our overheads and and what have you so um uh we we would expect uh, a small fee um not extortionate of course but a small fee uh and um uh you know we would um then give you the training we will then give you the training everything that you need to know to parent your newly diagnosed autistic child um or not even newly diagnosed we'll take anyone um you know so because we feel it's really important like if you're someone like mum who's missed the thinks they missed the opportunity to learn about you know it's never too late to learn about your child and how to support them mm. and you know it's really important to never stop learning about these things you know there are things that i i suppose even i um find out i learn different things about myself uh you know sort of new things about myself that i didn't know before um very regularly so i think it's very important that everyone is given the chance if they want to to actually join a course and say 
actually I want to learn about how to support my child even though they may be an adult you know how do they how do I help them transition from teenager or childhood to adulthood um, which is also very important but we also do um, businesses we help businesses we help schools we help organizations like government organizations mm -hmm. councils like officials all those kinds of people literally anyone uh if you've um if you've got the money and you're interested in um in learning how to uh how to become more disabled friendly or more disabled aware then um you know we will help you uh and in terms of the money we do offer flexible payments you know it's not just a uh, give us the money and you know we we do offer flexible um payments so you can pay in installments if you are a small business for example and don't have the capital right now but i guarantee that improving your disability uh, awareness and accessibility will definitely increase your customers uh you know your, the amount of customers and uh it was actually reported in uh two years ago uh that um uh there was uh a oh my gosh i can't remember how, the exact figure but it was billions hundreds of billions of pounds the whole of the uk was losing out on by not being disabled friendly um so this interview has turned into me plugging my business so uh let's get back on to the subject of discussion um but uh, if you are interested then please do don't hesitate to contact me um so uh do you think granddad knew that i was on the spectrum because he always kept us in a routine mm -hmm. he always um made sure that you know he was i mean despite the fact he was a military man and you know a routine was drummed into him um, yeah he was always up at five <laughs> yeah and always got up us, us yeah. up, up us <laughs> There wasn't a lot of difference between um, when your dad died, um, when we moved with mum and dad, there wasn't a lot of difference between the kind of routine that I was used to with granddad, because he was always up for, he made us all a cup of tea and, but yeah. I do believe that he had an inkling that you're on the spectrum. <laughs> I do, yeah. Now, I wonder, I've often wondered where my Asperger's comes from you know because a lot of um, people say that there is a di distinct genetic link between uh you know well uh, the cause of uh, autism especially asperger's um so i obviously um i was too young to remember what daddy was like but you used to you know you spent you knew him for five years you were married to him for five years you must have do you think he displayed any any of the traits i mean he was highly intelligent yeah very shy mm -hmm. introverted mm -hmm. but you know he uh he got cross once didn't he, he stamped oh, a his theater. in the theater yeah. um he was patient line up for a drink and people kept pushing up in front of him and in the end he just snapped he put his foot firmly on the floor he stamped his he foot. stamped his little foot on the floor so, little foot well, it was it's, well, size, size 13 <laughs> he stamped his size 13 yeah. uh yeah. on the floor and also he had trouble with numbers when he was um at school but he, he became an accountant he yeah, overcame yeah, he that. overcame the problem yeah he? because he was yeah. um and, he became and, and the week before he died he wanted well they put him on a drip 
and the nurse wasn't quite sure how to figure and he, he worked it out for her yeah, and she actually typed in the, the drip <laughs> oh thank you yeah oh thank yeah. you she was brilliant <laughs> yeah. that, that gives confidence I I <laughs> everyone needs to learn don't they? well yeah <laughs> but um yeah so i i wish i had a head for figures i mean I've always been so terrible at maths, as I said in my last podcast. Um, but, you know, like, I think there were definite traits there. Um, but was there anything else? Like, was there any similarities between him and me, you know, trait-wise? Um, he used to keep himself to himself sometimes. You know, he used to be quite shy and quiet and... Yeah. Preferred his company. Sometimes he liked his own company and Yeah. But like he was very well read. Yeah. He loved books like yeah. you. Yeah. So maybe there was a, a little bit. I'd only really heard of Asperger's when you were diagnosed. <laughs> That's sad, but um <laughs> but it's true. But I was thinking if we'd have known sooner you wouldn't have been as bullied at school, well maybe. i mean i or maybe i definitely would, think yeah. that if i'd have been diagnosed sooner my life would have been dramatically better mm. than it was but you know like i said hindsight is twenty twenty, and you know it's too late for me so that's another reason why i wanted to start this business because you know, it's too late for me, but not too late for other people. So I can educate people. I can use my experiences to educate people. And, you know, this is turning into another commercial, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. no, um, I think it's good. I've been trying to get an athlete onto the TV, but... Uh, um, oh, yeah, well... It, it's so hard. You it? have to... Um, yeah, you have to... I don't know... Rescue a cat from a tree or... or uh, or have this, a, or have a, she seems to have so much knowledge about have uh, an outrageously Asperger. large gluteus maximus <laughs> to get on the news <laughs> these days. Um, but uh, and mind yeah. you, you were interviewed and by a small uh, you were interviewed by an amazing comedian. Oh yeah, Lloyd Griffith. Lloyd I Griffiths. had a fantastic day being interviewed by Lloyd Griffith. That was in oh gosh, that was 2017. Yeah. Um. October the 4th, 2017, I was interviewed by uh, the brilliant Lloyd Griffith. And uh, I actually saw him last, no, 2020. Yeah, it was last year. Um, he was, I went to see Jack Whitehall. And, um, you know, he was his tour uh, warm up. Um, I tried to get his attention, but. Um, <laughs> He was obviously blinded by the, oh, the yeah. lights. When I used to be doing the trading the boards. Yeah. <laughs> you can but, only um, see a couple of people. Inside. Exactly, yeah. Um, but no, I got to meet Jack. It was so cool. Like Jack Whitehall when, I'm, when I went to see Jack Whitehall. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it was a really cool day um, both on both occasions. And I was actually, like when I... Um, was interviewed by Lloyd. I was making him laugh. Um, so yeah, I'm claim to fame, making making a comedian laugh. Um, but you have been uh, a little bit famous because uh, you were on Radio Solon, weren't you? Oh yes, With, I've been uh, on the, the radio. Lovely, what's her name? Steph Newenhouse. Steph yes. Newenhouse. Yeah. So I I have been on the radio twice. Mm. Um, but I don't know how many people listen. But <laughs> um, yeah. So. Yeah, the um, the other thing, uh, really, uh, that I was gonna say was um, what was I gonna say? <laughs> Embarrassing. Um, so um, when you uh, found out I had Asperger's, it did things kind of click into place that this is why uh, she did this or you were different during the day to others you well know. did it no but did it make sense it did yeah you know yeah like oh that's why that yeah. explains it not you and know, you had so, so many wonderful uh, imaginary friends um in the back 
you know, when he was having a bath, he used to talk to so many people. Yeah, hundreds. Uh, yeah. Um, um, but, um, yeah. He did. I wish, as I said, I wish I'd have known, and then you wouldn't have been so bullied. Well, yeah. But, like, you know, yeah. But there's so many... I it, wish I'd have been homeschooled. I do really yeah, wish I'd been yeah. homeschooled. But... Never mind. Yeah. It's too late now. You yeah. You're finished. Um, yeah, exactly. But, you know, if I had been homeschooled, I would have missed out on meeting some of the like the teachers you know in secondary school like oh, yeah, the teachers, was some, lovely ones. some of them some of the teachers at my secondary school mm. were really lovely mm. um and uh so that was that was nice yeah you'd miss out you would have missed out on some really good people and obviously i had i did my a levels exactly. i i wound up with three well two a's and an a star in in um in a levels um well in the equivalent of mm. distinction 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 star showing off now. criminology yeah criminology it and business so business was the one i got an a star in mm. um which was really i was really chuffed with you so well. yeah um and you got your maths yeah. in the end didn't you oh yes my maths i had to redo my gcse maths four times i think mm. three, three three or four times i had to take that but i managed it in the end you know and uh i have come a long way um so um yeah but i also had um like ocd and stuff mm -hmm. so did you kind of put two and two together that i had ocd or well i thought you used to wash your hands a lot yeah well, I had um, OCD with germs, but I also had OCD with other things as well. It escalated. Um, so we had a, a, a frog, um, a, a light pool in the toilet that was a shape of a frog. It, uh, and if, if, you, if you pulled it too hard or if let go too soon or whatever, it would hit the wall or hit the door. And I'd have to rub the frog, rub the wall, and rub the door. Um, you know, it was almost like it. it and it's like um, my bear, um, my uh, my Doctor Who bear. I have to kiss if I um, accidentally hurt him, uh, or mum. I get mum to kiss him, but in a specific pattern. Yeah. Um, sit on his leg or something. Yeah. Pull his ear. Yes. Pulling his ear, that's a no no. Um <laughs> I I I wrote a fan fiction where um like it was a Doctor Who fan fiction where uh, Donna pulls the doctor's ear and it's like and, and then uh, and it's like it turns out that that's like the most sensitive part of a time lord. <laughs> um and you know some dramatic stuff in the series, but then it it turns out all right again. Um, but uh, yeah, I um, I love writing fan fiction. I like you know it's just so um, such a pleasurable thing. I you know writing um, fan fiction mostly for sitcoms. Um, mostly my favourite sitcoms um which are all obscure like you know sort of 70s 80s 90s comedies but i just adore it and they all turn out rubbish well they turn out depressing most of the time um <laughs> but um yeah just as a mum uh, all the other mums and dads out there um if you notice your child is extra quiet after coming back home from school then sometimes it be nice if you ask you know is there anything wrong and if they say no maybe you should go and see the teacher and actually ask whether there is anything wrong because Natalie had epilepsy after a teacher bullied her for a whole year and we didn't know uh, that was the saddest part um Natalie was really quiet at, at times and we just yeah. thought she was you know like well, most, most children oh nothing happened at school I think most of us were like that yeah but uh, you know, I, 
I did tell you eventually. It, eventually, yeah. It, I told you before the seizure started. Because yeah, it was just when she actually left for her baby, then I think you started to relax, and that was when your body reacted. Yeah, my brain yeah. decided to try and kill me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was, well, that's, that's a very nice segue. I must say that is a really good segue. That is the smoothest link I've ever and I'm ruining its smoothness now. Um, <laughs> so I remember uh, once uh, we were on the way to, well, uh, we were going to go on a school trip. I was meant to go on a school trip. Um, and I just told mum and grandma and granddad about the abuse from the teacher. And... Uh, it was emotional abuse, not just bullying, you know. Um, it was way more than that, you know. Uh, and um, so uh, I told about that, uh, and we were, and I had a cold at the time, you know. I was really, I was poorly, so we were wondering, should I or should I not go on this school trip? And we eventually, uh, we were like, it was eleven o'clock at night. None, none of us could sleep, and um, we were we all went downstairs, back downstairs again, because neither of us, none of us mm. could sleep. And uh, it's really, it was really weird because um, I was sitting on the sofa. We were talking about uh, we started talking about this thing that Grandma had seen on the telly uh, about all these um, amazing people that were really clever or could do amazing things like she was talking I remember distinctly she was talking about this boy that uh, could use an abacus in the air like he he could use it could mm. count really uh, do really com ca uh, complicated sums um by pretending an abacus was there you know it was an imaginary abacus that he was using Anyway, I remember that distinctly, and we went downstairs, and we were chatting away about various things. Mum went upstairs. Don't know what she went up there for. Probably go to the bog or something. Um, and then during that time, I, both Grandma and I saw this light that came from the top, the helmet of the well. The we had a dividing, we had a a, a dining room and living room that were connected by an opening and uh, from the top of that came this light and it went like across the in a uh, diagonal uh, situation down uh, to the to the floor and I put my hand out to catch it I thought it was some kind of feather or something and it was you know actually an orb um, which is why it's really a nice segue because um, mum has a gift and that, that gift is that she can communicate with those that have departed um, and um, I can hear them saying she talks to dead people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, so what did I say about not interrupting? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so it, it's um, that's why it's quite a nice segue because we were talking about it goes from uh, the teacher um, and everything to uh, the spiritual stuff because I saw an orb and it wasn't my first um, paranormal experience. My first ever paranormal experience occurred when I was seven and I saw a full manifestation a full uh ghost if you like mm. um and uh i i was in the garden and i was on my swing and i was swinging away and i had the sudden urge to get off my swing so i jumped off it which is unusual for me because i'd swing for hours you know i just go so i just suddenly had this strange urge to get off my swing and so I, I leapt off it and and then along the garden path, the side of the path, there was a, a man 
It was translucent. All of a sudden, just appeared out of nowhere, apparated out of nowhere. Uh, he was translucent. He was wearing white, a, a white coat or white jacket with, uh, a, I think he had a tie on, but uh, he had these black trousers and black shiny shoes. And he had white hair as well. Um, and uh, our shed door was open at the time. So our sh like the opening was at the side and the shed door was open. So he disappeared into the shed door. Um, so that was my first ever paranormal experience. And I think the Asperger's definitely plays a role in my connection with the higher side of life because I think it's um, really... Um, uh, we're, we're on a different kind of level i mean i'm not being sno like snobbish we're higher up but um you know uh we're on a different vibration because mm. our brains are wired differently um mum despite the fact she's not on the spectrum has this gift but she is more apprehensive mm. uh, you know but you know she's she does readings for people and uh you know so when was your first well um, I did try and do, a, as most people know, a podcast, but I was so nervous. But Natalie makes it look so easy. I thought I'd have a go, but it ended up a disaster. But the first experience was when my nan used to pray for her family in in her bed. And I used to be in my bed. And um, I used to look at, just out the door was open to the corridor, you know, sorry, the um, um, passageway, you know, from the landing, the landing from the bathroom, yeah, the landing to the bathroom. And they used to, every time she prayed for somebody, they used to walk across uh, and go into for some reason the bathroom. <laughs> oh, but um, they that went that way, way they went they? from mum's mum and dad's room. Oh, um, I always the imagined them going the other way, <laughs> anyway, uh, and they sort of look see through. But I didn't realize what that was until quite later on in life, hmm. and I used to talk to mum and she used to say, well, that's probably spirit world. And yeah. She, her auntie, Jessie, Jessie was a medium and she used to go to a circle in London and she always said to my mum, if you ever see, if you ever get a chance when you're older, uh, she was only a little girl, uh, see Doris Stokes, she's amazing. And we actually went to see Doris Stokes and, uh, uh, and she said, oh, is there anyone up there called Cartoon? Because my mum was so shy, she just didn't put her hand up. My dad was asleep next to her. <laughs> you know what men are like. Yeah, she go to them and dig in the room. Yeah. And... Um, but she, um, Jessie always said uh, that she would try and get through. Well, yeah. Through and, um... It was like there was a Carter. They're actually related to Jimmy Carter, the yeah. former American president. Through marriage. Yes. Mm. It doesn't matter through marriage. No, I'm it? just trying to explain how. Um, um, uh, and then I, um, when was it? I did have a, an accident in the car. That's right. Um, after school, it sort of went. It went when I was at school. It kind of disappeared. But after I, I got bumps um, in the back of me, and I was sort of uh, not silly. And then when I sort of came out, and a few days later my gift sort of came back because I was giving readings for everyone yeah. after that. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you used to help at the school, mm. you gave readings, you, the teaching, uh, teachers and teaching assistants, yeah. you would give readings to. And they loved it. And, uh, yeah, you, you told people the kettle was going to explode. <laughs> and, <laughs> it did. And, it did, <laughs> and the, the gear stick was going to fall off. Yeah. And it did. And, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, so it's little things like that, but mm. then it obviously got um, better, uh, got as, better as time went on. And also, when she started uh, doing, you know, the she went to um, her, her friend, uh, the same friend that said, "Is your daughter autistic?" Mm. Um, the same friend took her. Uh, well, she um, trained her um, yeah. in how to. To, Deve to do it, develop, develop yeah. yeah. She went meditation to a and things. Yeah, meditation. She's amazing, this lady. Yeah. So, um, 
so since then, you know, she's been really um, giving readings to people and uh, uh, one uh, in particular is a lovely girl in America. Uh, she asked for a reading from her father and I gave this reading and then another gentleman walked through the wall. I know it sounds strange, but he smiled and he had a gold tooth and uh, I, I said, have you had somebody go missing? And she went, yes. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but he's actually on the other side and uh, since then we've been trying to um, figure it out figure it out but, but we, we so, know roughly where he is yeah. and uh, hopefully she'll find the help soon yeah to to find him you know but um yeah so um you you want to do more work with I'm missing people yeah, yeah I'd love sort to. of murder yeah. cases and yeah but obviously i um um uh, inherently fascinated with all things detective like <laughs> but like the fact that i'm my surname is sherlock you know you know is doesn't um <laughs> yeah um but obviously uh and we've got the you know um I'm actually writing a book, so I'd love to. Oh hear, yes, the, I'd love to hear from. Yeah, I'm the host. I'm oh, so, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just, uh, I do apologise. Yeah, so you're writing a book. Yeah. Uh, about you're collating your own and other people's experiences yeah. and uh, putting it all together mm -hmm. in in the form of a book. Yeah. So, do you know what it's called yet? Has it got a title? Spiritual Minds. Right. Okay. It's a working title. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, it's like yeah. Del Boy when uh, when he's um, coming up with the <laughs> idea for the uh, film, and he said uh, we could call it the Island of Death. Uh, it's like, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a working <laughs> title. Yeah, uh, but uh, there was uh, I, I remember watching that program um, on in america you know strange but true fact or fiction or something. oh yeah beyond belief fact or fiction. that's it and there was a program, beautiful yeah. story about angels and um actually i think it was it's a miracle with roman downing or yeah the walton boy what was his name john no it was it oh, was no. um thomas richard thomas I was hosting it, it yeah. I think. Anyway, this lovely lady just got divorced, uh, had nothing to eat for um, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, and she had three hot dog sausages in the fridge, went out for a picnic, and the boys were hungry when they got back, and this lovely old lady said, do you want to come for Thanksgiving dinner? And so she was a bit proud. She didn't really want to, did she? No. But anyway, she, but she did. She did, and there was <laughs> turkey and all this, all this food, food laid out. Yeah. And turned out she was an angel yeah i thought how amazing is that yeah wow. um but um yeah so um like there are obviously there are a lot of um you know people that don't like that sort of thing this sort of thing but you know to be honest it's we know it's the truth mm. and because we've experienced we've seen we've heard we mm. you know when my husband when your dad was dying mm. he said um oh, i can see john and john was his uncle that passed a, a year before with a brain tumor and i said well how's he look has he still got his beard uh, you know i think you yeah. asked him oh, has yeah. he still oh, got his right. beard yeah I, I asked him if he's still got his beard and he went yes and <laughs> If, if he wants just go and you know go with him and uh, he was gone a few hours later he was gone but it was nice to think that john came for him yeah you know, well he didn't go with you in the room did he, he waited he until waited, you got yeah he yeah until, <laughs> people uh, do that now don't yeah, they they yeah, wait that's it but um yeah so i mean i think it's um it's it's jolly really interesting and you know we we make sure we find out first people's opinions before we oh, yeah um, i know it's know. a private um you know individual choice Thing, yeah you know i wouldn't push it in push it on anyone because i've had that experience i think it's just incredible you know yeah. I've, i believe and, in god people and, say to me that oh you yeah. can't believe in god when you do all that stuff you know 
well where do you think it god comes is? from oh, yeah, yeah it comes god from is the um ultimate spirit the ultimate but um spirit. but just going back to uh paranormal experiences for a minute mm. there is one that i truly cannot explain i have no explanation for it whatsoever uh, other than the paranormal well, i haven't got any explanation for anyone of the paranormal experiences that i've had but this is one of the most convincing um so it was uh, we were in swanage um and uh, i was on the phone to um my what is now my ex-boyfriend uh, and I was uh, in the bathroom and the door was locked and we had a, 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 a knob, um, you know, a door knob to the bathroom that you had to turn, you know, you had to twist it with your hand. It wasn't one that you could do lightly. You just had to quite, you know, stiff to twist. So all of a sudden I was sitting there chatting away and all of a sudden the door no, uh, the, the lock was going in and out, in and out, in and out, as if someone was trying to enter the bathroom. Now, mum was out of the house. She was walking the dog at the time. And then about 10, 15 minutes later, it did this about 10 times, this lock, as if someone, and it, it wasn't a burglar because she'd locked the door. And, uh, you know, and I, I would have heard a burglar you know approach you know i would have heard the foot on the stairs but it was nothing it was just this as if someone was trying to get into the bathroom uh so i was like a gog <laughs> you know i was i wasn't frightened i was really excited because i thought yes a paranormal experience a nice juicy one <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, we've been ghost hunting a couple of times. Oh, I love that. When we went mm. to Wales last two years ago, it mm. was two years ago, because um, two years ago yesterday, we climbed Mount Snowden and actually came up wow, on the phone. It? That's gone quick. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I did that for charity, mind. Um, but um, I was disappointed that I only raised 200 quid, but. I suppose, and everyone's saying, oh, well, that's good, you know, at least you got something, blah, 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 blah. But I have a very high standard. Um, I have very high standards, and uh, I am very disappointed when I can't achieve what I want to achieve. Um, but I, uh, yeah, so anyway, we went uh, on, uh, we went on a mountain climbing holiday, well, we climbed Mount Snowden on the second day that we were there, the Sunday, Sunday the 12th. And um, so we did that. And then for the rest of the week, we just uh, went around all, went around all places in North Wales, mm -hmm. went to Beaumaris Jail. That was very interesting. Um, something touched my leg in one of the cells uh and it was particularly it was like the cell that they put all the naughty people in like if they'd have if they you know um if if they were been particularly if an inmate that that's already in uh, prison did something particularly naughty like an isolation cell you know mm. um so we we went into one of the isolation cells and turned the light off and you know something touched my leg so it was quite um didn't really like the atmosphere in there um uh, especially with the light off um but um we also went to a couple of castles and we went to oh plasma we went to it was like a uh sort of house kind of thing uh, we went to where else did we go? Uh, Plasnewid, uh, and we went to some various other things. But it's so funny because we went with our friends, and um, the um, the man at uh, Plasnewid Castle uh, mistook one of our friends for 
mum's husband, <laughs> which he wasn't very pleased about at all. I mean, well, it's, it's not... <laughs> he just thought it was funny. Didn't he? Yeah. Uh, it's like Mr. and uh, Mr. Sherlock. I was here. no, definitely not. <laughs> um, but no. Um, you say that I, we did have a little laugh. Uh, well, had a little laugh. I had, this is nothing connected with the spiritual stuff. It was just when Natu men mentioned about her husband. About ten years later, after Anthony had passed, I had a phone call from I don't know if it was British Gas or something like that. And she said, "Oh." Hello, Mrs. Sherlock. We had a, a phone call from your husband last week saying they what he wanted to change the tariff. I said, oh yeah. I said, uh, uh, how are you at Jigsaw Puzzles? How, how are you at Jigsaw Puzzles? Um, and she said, what do you mean? I said, well, he's been gone ten years, so I don't think it could have been him. <laughs> been cremated. <laughs> yeah, he was cremated ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, and she kind of put the phone down. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised, but uh, it's so funny, you know. You get people, but like, um, it's like uh, in Carry On Screaming, uh, when it's like, Can I speak to the master of the house? <laughs> is the master of the house is dead, sir. <laughs> and oh, uh, <laughs> he's been dead 15 years now, <laughs> but. Um, if uh, you wait here, I will see if uh, you can see him. <laughs> that would be most helpful. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, he was brilliant in that film. The um, uh, Harry H. Corbett, yeah. I loved Harry H. Corbett. Um, yes, played yeah. Harold Steptoe in Steptoe and Son. Um, yeah, but yeah, so um. What else did you want to say? If there's anyone that like a reading, just uh, contact Natalie and I'll be happy to give you a reading. Or if there's anyone that's interested in, you know, trying to find somebody, then uh, also contact Oh, yeah, Natalie. missing persons, yeah. murder cases. Yeah. I, cause I work We're also, easy. I work with um, psychometry, so uh, I can hold an object and... Read the vibrations Read the it. vibrations. And don't worry, she'll give you it back. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> she once um, got a load of stuff from a, a shoe. Yeah, that was. Or a uh, bar of chocolate as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, all sorts of things. All sorts of things. Yeah. Read the vibration from yeah. bracelets, necklaces, things like that. All things, yeah. all manner of things. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, but you're you you're not that bad. Oh no, I can uh, look at something. A platform, yeah. or you know, yeah, and uh, she's very good on the phone as well. Yeah. You know, she can connect if you, yeah, you know, just by hearing their voice, mm, voice can connect, connect with them. Mm. So, yeah, um, and uh, and if anyone is interested in my business, oh, also, yeah. um, my t shirts, I have new t shirts, uh, a well, one, a new t shirt design that I've um, uh, that I designed, uh the other day it's um a t-shirt that says nothing per it's nothing personal it's just asperger's obviously it's quite a niche um a niche uh, design for a t-shirt less a lot less um a lot more niche than the um than the uh labels uh, for jars not humans t-shirt but uh, you know if you know someone with asperger's that um or if you yourself has asperger's then please don't hesitate to uh, buy my t-shirt. Um, also, uh, talking of which, hopefully, I'm not sure when, but we have a very, very, very exciting guest on very soon. His name is Dan Jones, he, or AKA uh, The Aspie World. Um, he, his channel is called The Aspie World, and he um, is very... Uh, uh, prominent YouTuber, so um, most most excited to have him on. Um, so I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after or whatever, but I, I will have to find out. But he's going to be on my podcast, mm -hmm. so I'm really, really buzzed about that. And uh, yeah, so we've actually got 
uh, five minutes. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, thank you so much for talking to me because I uh, messed my own podcast up. I was so nervous. I don't know why. And yeah. then, <laughs> you know, because she made me put it on hers <laughs> and then I couldn't get back onto my Facebook, which is why I had the issues. And also, uh, I couldn't get back onto my Facebook, um, you know, because we, I, um, I needed to change my Facebook password, and I couldn't do that because my email storage was full. So I had to delete a bunch of emails in order to get enough storage to get the emails through to like send you a code um, to change your Facebook password. So in the end, I managed to do that yesterday and I got it back and here we are. <laughs> so anyone out there who'd like to tell me your story that would like to be in the book, then... Oh yes, yeah. Awesome. If you have any paranormal experiences yeah. that you'd like to share and it can be anonymous if you don't want to put your name to it, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. We can just put a non or make up a name like it's just nice to hear from other people's experiences yeah There's so many different ones so many people have had experiences mm. and there are various uh, there's a brilliant program with celebrity ghost stories and they get various celebrities to you know sport speak about their uh, ghost stories and there was one uh telly savalis it was quite frightening actually mm. uh he um Tell us about this, uh, to anyone that doesn't know, was played Kojak in Kojak. <laughs> but he also sang <coughs> in a picture paint a thousand words. Um, well, hopefully I won't get copyright strikes for that, but um, <laughs> no. the picture paints a thousand words, he also did. Anyway, anyway, he... Um, <laughs> sound nothing like it, so don't worry. Oh, thanks. Oh, just, just a joke, just a joke. Right, anyway, on. so <laughs> I, um, uh, so he, uh, Teddy Savalis was driving home one night in the dark and he ran out of petrol uh, and he came across this, um, all of a sudden this really effeminate high pitched voice said, I'll give you a ride, which already puts your hairs at the <laughs> back of your neck. Um, and uh, so he um said oh thank you you know and they uh, he drove him down to the petrol station got him some petrol and everything else and uh he said oh we mentioned this baseball player and um talking about the red Sox, and this um uh, and then um he said oh can i give you any money tell it tell it to us said, can i give you any money for the uh gasoline and whatever uh, but he said oh no no that's fine or oh, it's and then he wrote his address down or he wrote his um telephone number down and and then he uh he went on his merry way and uh and then the next morning uh he found out that the baseball player that he'd mentioned had died but also he phoned up this number that he'd written down for him and uh, this woman answered and he said, uh, yeah, hello, I'd like to speak to so-and-so. And, -so. and he, she said, like, is this a joke? You know, it's like some sick joke and put the phone down. And he, she, he rang her again and said, no, no, this isn't a joke. This is, uh, I uh, he got me some gas and I wanted to repay him and everything like that. So, so uh, she, um, she got him to describe him and he described him perfectly except for the the voice and uh he said, she said no no he had a really deep voice but the the guy had actually um well it's not very nice this bit but taken his own life fire a gun uh so he had a obviously um he had this high pitch voice but uh, he never slept again uh, after that well he never slept during the night he always obviously must have had naps during the day uh, but he never never slept at night again after that experience. So, yeah. But that, um, 
that draws it draws you to a close hopefully i'm uh, <laughs> frightened you too much <laughs> um for anyone who wants a reading just give natalie a bell yeah and, and also anyone that would uh, like to buy a t-shirt link is in yeah. the, the the link will be in the description uh and and or comments uh or, you know comments on um facebook and description on youtube and i will uh see you next week hopefully with aspie world dan yeah if not then somebody else but they will be equally interesting i'm sure and uh that brings us to the end of the hour so i have but one thing to say goodbye god bless and continue being awesome that was amazing